On this week's episode, Jared discusses the Disneyland hotels and talks about their signature suites. Welcome to this week's episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer, and today we are wrapping up the second episode of the two-part series about the hotels at the Disney resorts and where are the best places to stay and talking about the different levels of the hotels at the resorts. Last week, if you listened to our episode, we were talking about Disney World and about the three different levels over there. So the value, the moderate, and the deluxe, as well as the villas and all the great different places to stay at Disney World, as well as the different amenities you're going to get at each of the resorts. Today, we're going to continue that episode, but we're moving over to Anaheim in California, and we're going to be talking specifically about Disneyland. Now, if you're watching this episode on YouTube, I did it in a little bit of a different format where I'm doing a screen share once again, like I did with our annual pass episodes, and I'm actually going to walk you through on the screen some of these different resorts and specifically the signature suites because they are amazing and you get so much out of these signature suites. And I wanted to show you all the pictures because they're just the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. So we're going to be going over that today on the episode. But before we dive into it and get started, I do want to ask wherever you're listening to us, if you could go ahead and click that subscribe button, or if you're on YouTube, you can click subscribe there as well. It's totally free to subscribe on the podcast or on YouTube. That way you're going to get this content delivered into your inbox each and every single week as we release these episodes. And you're going to get these tips and tricks as they come out. So we want to make sure you're getting the most value and the most bang for your buck at the Disney and Universal Resorts, which is why we're doing this podcast. In addition to that, if they if you find that there's anything that on these podcasts that save you money or time or make your life a little bit easier, if you could support us over at Patreon, we would really appreciate it. The link to Patreon is down in the description below as well. And you can become a subscriber there for as little as $5 a month. And that keeps this podcast going. In addition to keeping the podcast going, though, you're going to get some really cool perks as well as some other additional content, which today's our Butterbeer episode and how to go to Disney for almost free. And we will be bringing those onto our general page and updating those uh, sometime in 2023. So Lots of cool things out of Patreon. And again, we appreciate our supporters there because like I said, you keep this podcast going and you are the reason we are doing this podcast. So today we're going to be talking about Disneyland out in Anaheim and what are the different hotels and resort levels. And if you listen to our last episode that I talked to one of our longtime listeners who said, hey, I love all the episodes you're doing, all the tips and tricks. Obviously, you want people to stay at the Dryer Dosic Disney condo and you feel that's the best bang for the buck, which it's true. I feel that is the best bang for the buck. If you want to stay there, great. If not, that's okay too. But he said, for some people, they want to go and do Disney from beginning to end. They want to make sure that they're staying at a Disney hotel, a Disney resort. So tell us about the places that you can stay. Tell us about the different levels of the resort and what are the different amenities you're going to get. And so we did that last week with Disney World and talking about the resort down there. And today we're over at Disneyland talking about it here. Now, at Disneyland, it's very different from Disney World for a couple different reasons. First, there's only three hotels over at Disneyland, and all three of these hotels are at the deluxe level, if you listen to our last episode, meaning they're at the top tier when you compare them to the other Disney resorts. So uh, you've got the Disney Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, and we've got that up on the screen here. That's very comparable to the Grand Floridian out in Orlando. You've got the Paradise Pier and the Disneyland Hotel. So you're talking about all deluxe level hotels. So you're not going to see a lot of difference in the different tiering here, although the pricing is slightly different. But we're going to talk through what you're going to get at those hotels, what it looks like, and the general ambiance and the benefits of staying at a Disney hotel out in Anaheim. So looking at my notes here, I want to explain that the second difference is all of these hotels are on site, meaning that you can walk from any of these three hotels to the parks. And in fact, they're attached to downtown Disney and to the parks themselves. So for example, if you're staying at the Grand Californian Hotel here in Anaheim, you're going to have your own special entrance into California Adventure, which is really cool. And you can walk from the Grand Californian to downtown Disney or to the Magic Kingdom Disneyland Park. Disney's Paradise Pier also is up against California Adventure. It doesn't have its own entrance, but you can walk, obviously, to either park. And then the Disneyland Hotel is on the other side of downtown Disney, 
and it basically connects to downtown Disney. So you can walk through downtown Disney and get over to the two parks from there as well. So it's very convenient. It's very close. Uh, there is a monorail here at the Disneyland park. The monorail does touch Tomorrowland and it does touch the downtown Disney district as well, but you will need a park pass to ride that since it does drop you off inside of Tomorrowland. And that's a convenient way to get into the backside of the park. If you're looking to do that from the Disneyland hotel, other than that, you're going to be walking or taking your special entrances. Now, when we're talking about hotel pricing, let's talk about the differences between the three. Your lowest end of the deluxe resort. So keep in mind, we're still talking about the top level resorts here, but the lowest end resort is the Paradise Pier Hotel. So the Paradise Pier Hotel starts at $200 a night, can go up to about $350 a night. The Disneyland Hotel, which is your middle tier of the three, starts at about $300 and goes up to $400 per night. And the Grand Californian starts at $475 and goes up to $1,000 per night. Now, when you compare this to Disney World and Orlando, that the deluxe resorts out there start at about $500 and go up to $800 per night. So that's on par with the Grand Californian here. These other Paradise Pier and Disneyland Hotel prices are closer to your moderate tier prices out in Orlando. So if you're debating between the two parks, if you're trying to decide, do I want to go to Anaheim or do I want to go to Orlando and money is an issue for you and you want to make sure that you're very budget sensitive and you want to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck, you can get a higher level hotel in Anaheim between the Paradise Pier or Disneyland Hotel than you can in Orlando for the same dollar. So that means you're going to get a little more bang for your buck in Anaheim. The downside is you only have two parks to visit. Now, granted, you can spend multiple days at the Disneyland Park pretty easily. California Adventure, you can do two days at California Adventure. I will personally say that it to me and our family, we feel it's a one-day park, but by all means, you're more than welcome to spend two days there. Where in Orlando, you're going to get four parks. You're going to have four days of fun that you can do out there and something different every single day versus here at Disneyland. So a little bit of a difference there. Now, when we are talking about the room style and room quality at the Disneyland hotels, these three hotels, the room sizes are about 300 square feet, which again is on par with the moderate resorts out in Orlando, up to 500 square feet up at the Grand Californian. So uh, do know that uh, the room sizes are that moderate to deluxe size. They do come with two queen beds or one king bed with a sofa if you'd like to have that. The bathrooms are a little bit different than what you're going to see out in Orlando, at least at the Disneyland Hotel. And I can tell you personally, I've stayed there, so I, I know that there is a little bit of a difference in the sense that the bathrooms at the Disneyland Hotel are your typical hotel bathrooms where uh, you're going to go in, you're going to get your sink, your toilet, and your shower, and the door is going to close. Now, over in Orlando, we talked about the distinction is the sink is outside of the bathroom, meaning that more people obviously can be getting ready and can be using the sink while people are showering or using the toilet. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility in Orlando than it does in Anaheim. But really, at the end of the day, it's not a huge difference between the two. Now, all three of these hotels, though, being the deluxe level hotels, have the nicer bathrooms that are nicer showers, a little more lit, a little bit more spread out, where in Orlando, you're going to see more shower curtains and they're going to be a little bit tighter. So a little bit of a key difference there. We've talked about transportation. Let's talk next about restaurants, because that was one of the call outs on the last episode when we were talking about the resorts in Orlando. So in Orlando, you're different levels. So your value is going to usually have a food court. Your moderate is going to have food court plus a sit down restaurant. And then your deluxe is going to have multiple restaurants here in Anaheim. Since these are all deluxe, you're going to have multiple restaurants on site, not to mention since they are on site you are going to be able to walk between them and walk to downtown Disney, and you're going to have access to all of those restaurants as well. So if food is your thing. You're definitely going to have more food options in Anaheim than you will in Orlando. And being at the deluxe level, there is an abundance of them. They're all great. I can tell you I've eaten at more than a handful of them myself, and all the food typical to Disney is phenomenal. The experience is very nice, especially they have a really nice steakhouse in the Grand Californian that I went to a couple of years ago, and it was just amazing. It was a great experience over there. So know that there's lots of restaurants, lots of choices, lots of different food items that you can get. Next, let's talk about pools, because I know a lot of families like to go to a place where their kids can go swim and have a great time at the pool. And all three of these being deluxe uh, accommodations are all going to have really nice pools with water slides and water features, and they're large pools. In fact, when I stayed at the Disneyland Hotel, 
It's in between the three towers over there is this large pool in the center. There's plenty of room for people to sit out. There is only one pool at the Disneyland Hotel when you compare it to Orlando, where some of the resorts have multiple pools, but it is a very large pool with plenty of seating and lots of fun activities to do. Know that you're going to have a great time at the pool. Your kids are going to absolutely love it. They're going to say it's probably one of the best pools that they have ever been to in their entire lives. So when you're thinking about that, you really can't go wrong at any of the three Disneyland hotels. They are all about the same class. They are all very nice hotels and that are all having about the same size of rooms with the same kind of food features and the same kind of pool features. The difference is going to be really the pricing between them and know that, yeah, the Grand Californian is a nicer hotel in general. The rooms are a little bit bigger. They're obviously newer and it's a little bit more upscale than the other two. So that's obviously the biggest price difference there, not to mention the access to California Adventure Park. But you're within walking distance within a couple hundred yards of the parks from any of the three hotels. So none of the three are a bad choice. Now, we have talked about on other episodes, the best places to stay, that when you're talking about Anaheim, there are hundreds of hotels within walking distance and even more when you're considering shuttling or taking your own car into the parks. So a lot of different choices that you can have out there compared to just the three that are on site. But all three of these hotels are a lot of fun and definitely places that I would recommend staying. Now, the kicker, here's the best part. And I would argue this is the I can do this all day tip of the day when we're talking about the Disneyland hotels are the signature suites. And I wanted to spend some time talking about these signature suites because they are so out of this world and very different than what you're going to see out in Orlando. Now, in Orlando, we talked about each of the hotels does have their own suites that you can uh, reserve. And at the Grand Floridian, they do have some really cool suites like the Walt Disney Suite and the Roy Disney Suites. But those are themed, obviously, to their creators and the owners of the Disney company historically. These suites out at Disneyland are themed meaning that they have a specific theme they're trying to accomplish, and they really go overboard when doing this theme. So there are five suites in total. They are at the Disneyland Hotel, and we are going to start today by sharing the fairy tale suite. Now, I changed on my screen here to show you the fairy tale suite. There are about 15 photos we're going to go through. So if you're on YouTube, you're going to be able to see those. If you are not on YouTube and you're listening to us on the podcast, I'm going to describe uh, the look and feel of these rooms, but I encourage you go to the Disneyland website and you can go take a look at these signature suites. When you go to the Disneyland hotel, they do have special pages for each of the suites and they have all the photos in there. The fairy tale suite does only sleep for two people. There is only one king size bed, which is what we show up on the screen today. It is a four post bed and it's done very royal, very elegant. So lots of whites, lots of purples, which purple is the color of royalty. And this is designed after the princesses at the Disney park. So on the wall, you can see in the background, they've got Cinderella, they've got Belle and the Beast, and they've got other different decorations that are tied to the Disney princesses. So this is perfect for a romantic getaway. If you want to get away with your significant other and come stay at a fairy tale type suite. Again, this is on one of the top floors at the Disneyland hotel. The views are amazing and we will Hopefully see that here in the next couple pictures, but they have cool features. Like when you come in, uh, Tinkerbell flies and lights up the lights. There's a lot of really cool hidden things within these suites, and uh, we're going to take you through these. Here on the next screen is a placard for the fairy tale suite outside of the door. So obviously when you walk up that you're going to the right place. Here is another view of the bed. Obviously, this is a large king bed, like I said, four post bed. They have some sitting room around the bed. So there is a chair lounge uh, off to the side. Obviously, you've got all your tables in there, but you can look at the wallpaper and everything's really elegantly designed. In the bathroom, they have a mural of a Disney castle above the bathtub. It's got pillars around the bathtub. Uh, this is your typical whirlpool type jacuzzi bathtub. They've got a really cool sitting area for makeup. Obviously, they've got a glass, a frosted glass walk-in shower. Uh, that's really nice in the bathroom. And this is a very large bathroom, which is very cool. In the toilet room, they have a toilet with a bidet. Now, if you're from the U.S., you've probably not used or experienced a bidet, but uh, you have that availability if you wanted to in the fairy tale suite. And again, this is good for uh, two people because there's just the one bed. Uh, you can see now where we've got the view of what it looks like outside of the suite. 
So again, you're on the corner, so you can see in two directions, including the Disneyland Park, which is really cool. And then obviously they've got the writer's desk and just a lot of cool little touches throughout the apartment here. So this is a great place to stay if you want to at the fairy tale suite. Again, only for two people and really a unique place that's very well designed to meet the Disney princess type of look and feel. Next, we are going to go to the Mickey Mouse penthouse. And this is a newer suite. In fact, this one can sleep up to four people. There are two rooms in here, one with a king bed and then a kid's room with a rounded bed. But here we're looking at a wet bar that is done, obviously, all Mickey. It's got the Mickey phone at the wet bar, a Mickey statue. You've got Mickey frosted glass for the mirror at the bar. And I will say that this design here is very modern. It's got a lot of color that just pops at you. And you're going to see that throughout all the photos here. But there's uh, obviously a red countertop. You've got yellow chairs. When you go through the rest of the suite, you're going to see Mickey pretty much everywhere you go. So this next picture is a picture of the bathroom. You have a bathtub. You've got Mickey pictures up around the walls here from some classic Mickey cartoons. They've got a really nice bathroom with obviously the granite countertops, a lot of cool accents and features within here. They have a walk-in shower that is over the top Mickey. This is very modern art design with a lot of bright colored tiles and Mickey heads everywhere, but a really fun shower there. Again, when you look at the sink, uh, I'm going through the pictures here through the bathroom. They've got Mickey down in the sink bowl as well. So this one's very over the top, like Mickey is everywhere within this suite. So consider that as well. It's like I said, lively, a lot of colors, a lot of different designs here. When you get into the bedrooms, when you're on the Disney site, they only have the 10 pictures that show you the wet bar area as well as the bathroom. They don't have any pictures that show you the rooms. But the rooms are designed very similar to the wet bar area. One room has a king bed. Mickey's all over the place, all over that room. And then the second bedroom has a round uh, bed. It's a large bed. Two kids could probably sleep in there. And they've designed that more with a Fantasia type of motif with the uh, Mickey Sorcerer's hat and stuff like that around the room. So that is the Mickey suite. Again, this is a newer room there, a newer suite that they just designed. It is two bedrooms plus the living space. So quite a bit of square footage in there. Again, this is perfect for four people. The third room, this is one of my favorites. I have two favorites and this is one of them. This is the big thunder suite and we've got 40 pictures to take you through here. So I'm going to go through uh, some of these quickly, but this is very much designed to be uh, very rustic, uh, very like farm-like where you've got lots of wood, lots of beams everywhere. Everything is made from wood. It's very much that Yellowstone, if you watch that show, type of look and feel. Obviously, the fireplace is encased in stone. Uh, you've got a large living area and dining area when you walk in. As you go through here, they've got a picture of Thunder Mountain above the fireplace. They've got a lot of different mining type artifacts up around the apartment, meaning they've got lanterns and things of that nature. But this suite is designed really well. It's very upscale. It's very uh, chic. It's very nice. Leather chairs pretty much everywhere. But this one at Big Thunder can sleep six people. So I will say if you ever want to book the Big Thunder suite and you're going to pay for the Big Thunder suite and you are not going to use up all six spaces, contact us at a dryer dose of Disney. We would love to come out and uh, stay with you. We would uh, love to do an episode with you at the suite, take a tour through the suite with you. And then of course your days in the parks, we'll join you uh, for those days in the parks and we will be your tour guides for free. Just to have the ability to stay in the suite is something that we've always wanted to do and do an episode there and we'll share our tips and tricks. But as you go through, you can see a lot of stone accents, a lot of beam accents everywhere. It's all designed with a lot of browns and a lot of leather. There is a wet bar in here as well, but just lots of cool accents. I'm going to keep going through these photos. I'm going to speed up just a little bit. The dining room can seat eight people, which is really cool. They've got a lantern wheel for the chandelier above that. Let's get into some of the rooms here. The first room. So you've got a room here with a king bed. It is just your typical large king bed with a sitting area and a writer's desk in here. It's a very, again, a very large room with a barn style door that slides to the bathroom. When you go into the bathroom here, I'm going to skip forward on my photos. You have a copper based tub. This is not a claw tub. This is one that sits flush on the ground, but it is copper. They've got the copper sinks as well. So really cool design uh, here in the bathrooms. 
You have a walk-in stone shower, which is awesome. Two sinks in here. So really cool design and setup here in the Big Thunder suite. Let's keep going to one of the other rooms. So here's a second bedroom with what looks to be about a queen size bed. This one is its own room. It does not have an attached bathroom to it like the master does, but it does have a bathroom right outside again with a copper sink and the other features there. This one does have uh, two bedrooms. Like I said, it does sleep six. It does have the king size bed in the master. It's got a queen bed in the second room and then a queen size sleeper sofa that does pull out in the main room. So it can't sleep six. So this is a really cool themed design here. Let's go to the next one. This is my second favorite one. This is the Pirates of the Caribbean suite. This is one of my favorite rides. This one's got some really cool design elements to it. I will say it's very upscale as well, but it is not designed in the same way as the Big Thunder Mountain suite or the Adventureland suite, which is the next one that has all the very specific accents. Now, in the Pirates of the Caribbean suite, you do have a lot of pirate decor, but for the most part, they did a good job of keeping this one toned down a little bit. It's not as loud as the Mickey suite, but we're going to take you through this. So you've obviously got the big wooden doors, big wooden table. You've got a large sitting area, fireplace, TV above the fireplace. But if you look on the screen here, a lot of our accents are, they've got a globe. They've got uh, some things in the display case. It's not as in your face as some of the other suites are. The dining room table does seat eight. They do have a wet bar in here behind the wet bar. They do have some pirate artifacts, including a sailboat and things up on the shelves back there. But again, a very nice living room area here within the Pirates of the Caribbean suite. In one bedroom, you do have, uh, this one does sleep four people in the Pirates of the Caribbean suite. Again, we will throw the offer out to you. If you are a couple and you wanted to book this and you wanted us to come along, my wife and I will come down and we will take you on a tour through the parks and we will be your tour guys there for rope drop. And we will do an episode from the apartment here with you in it, because uh, obviously we want to get you on and talk about uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean suite. So that way our subscribers can get a chance to see the inside of the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean suite from our video. And we will walk them through and you can talk about all the cool things that you see there as well. But obviously nice sized room with the king size bed. You've got a separate sitting area for the bathroom. You've got a walk-in shower, a toilet. You've got two sinks. Again, this is a really nice apartment type style, but it's not over the top. It's not in your face. Now, when we went through the Big Thunder Mountain Suite, they had the copper uh, bathtub. They had the copper sinks. This one's just normal granite type sinks, uh, a normal type shower. So again, not as over the top as uh, the Big Thunder Mountain Suite is. Here is the second bathroom that you can see on the screen here. Again, two sinks. Uh, this one has the bathtub and then a walk-in shower there. So a uh, really cool design and setup there for the two bedrooms. They each have their own bathroom that they can use. So one of them has bricked in shower. The other one's got a tile shower. Uh, so that way we can see the difference between the two. But that way, each bedroom is going to have their own setup there, which is really nice as well. Unlike the Thunder Mountain Suite where it's steep six, but two people are going to be in the living room and they're going to be sharing. The last bedroom here has two twin beds that are separated. Uh, again, this is perfect for kids if you want to take your kids. And this is on one of the top levels of the Disneyland Hotel, so you're going to get great views uh, from there as well. Which now brings me to our final suite, which is the Adventureland suite. This one does sleep six as well, so same offer. If you want to stay in the Adventureland suite and you're not using all six spaces and you would like for the Dryer Dose at Disney to come on site with you, we would love to come and stay there with you and do a podcast and record that, and then we'll be your tour guides through the parks over your stay there. But this one has obviously 40 pictures. You can see in this main living area, you've got this area in the bookshelf where people can sit. It's that little book nook is what we like to call it, as well as you've got your whole living room. You've got your dining room. This one only does six, but it does have its own wet bar here as well. But this one's very much uh, designed with Adventureland in mind. It's over the top with a lot of the different animal prints and designs. They do have some call outs to Indiana Jones here, which I absolutely love because I'm a big indie fan. But you can obviously see here, obviously the views are great. This suite is huge with the living space. The fireplace area is designed like a library with a lot of books. Really cool art design there, but just a great place with a lot of leather. Again, a lot of wood accents here. And then this is the little book nook. When you go down the hall, you're going to be able to get into the rooms here. They've got back by the dining room table, they've got a writer's desk with an airplane propeller above that if you wanted to write some notes or whatnot. So cool little sitting area there. They've got lots of pictures of the main living space.
but this is the first bedroom. So this is a king bed with, again, four posts. It's got the mosquito netting up and around it with a sitting area. Now, the weird thing about this bedroom is it does have the bathtub in the actual room where you would sleep. It's not in its own separate bathroom area, which this room does have as well, but the bathtub is in the room with you. When you go over into the bathroom, and I'm skipping forward, this room does also have a fireplace, which is nice. But when you go into the bathroom, now you have your shower, you have two sinks, a nice sitting area for if you want to put on your makeup or whatnot, but a really cool design for the bedroom here. Again, the tub is out in the room instead of in here, but they've got a kind of a hidden grotto, they say here in the Adventureland suite through one of the showers. So you can go into the back of the shower and there's some cool places to sit, which is what we're looking at on the screen right now. Second bedroom is also a king bedroom. So a, a larger bed in here. Again, you have, it's a, more like a typical type bedroom that you would see with uh, the writer's desk. It's got the dresser. It's got the TV on top of it, but again, with the same rustic design and theme. Now, the best part about this bedroom that I'm showing right now, this is the second bedroom, is this one is designed to look like it's in a tent. If you're out there on a safari, you may be staying in one of those large canvas tents. They've designed this room to look like that with the tent poles and the canvas all over the ceiling and the walls, as well as around your window. That's a cool feature. I think that's makes it really stand out as compared to some of the other suites because they did the room so differently for this second bedroom. And then again, a second bathroom with actual stone sinks and then a stone shower in the background there for you to see. And then I would assume then beds number five and six are going to be in a pullout sofa here in the middle of the living room, similar to the Big Thunder Mountain suite. So really cool place. Again, these Disneyland Suites, these signature suites are what make the Disneyland Hotel stand out, in my opinion, and really take this place to the next level. And we wanted to make sure we showed you all of these places just because of how cool they are. So with that is going to wrap up our episode today. We hope you have a very magical week as you're planning your next vacation to the Disney parks. And we will talk to you guys next time. Bye bye.